Hello and welcome, this is Xbox Ahoy and this is the 15th in my series of Modern Warfare 2 Weapon Guides. This time we're taking an in-depth look at the second sniper rifle, the Shaytak Intervention. The Intervention is a bolt-action sniper rifle, the only such one in the game, meaning that the action must be manually cycled between each shot. It's available alongside the Barrett 50 Cal as soon as you unlock Create a Class. The Intervention M200 rifle is just a single element of Shaytak's long-range rifle system. It originates from the United States and is based on the earlier EDM Arms Windrunner rifle. The Intervention entered production in 2001. It fires the specially designed 408 Shaytak round, suitable for multiple roles including anti-personnel, anti-materiel and counter-sniper roles. It lacks the raw kinetic energy of the 50 calibre BMG round, but has a superior muzzle velocity and more balanced aerodynamics, meaning it can reach out accurately to greater distances than most other cartridges. As with the Barrett 50 Cal, you need to be both accurate and patient, adopting a defensive role, anticipating an offensive push and setting up a firing zone over a choke point to be at your most effective. While the Barrett has a higher effective rate of fire and larger magazine, the intervention has identical damage and an unpredictable but otherwise significantly reduced view kick. Most of the time you won't lose sight of your target between shots. In addition, the reload time of the intervention is quicker than that of the Barrett, useful should you decide not to use sleight of hand. The intervention has higher idle sway when scoped in than the Barrett, meaning that holding your breath is more essential for accurate fire. The slow rate of fire means you have to plan your shots, which can be beneficial for your accuracy. It's tempting with a semi-automatic weapon to just spray and pray, but the intervention quickly teaches you to aim before you fire. The intervention can be silenced, preventing your shots from revealing your location, but it's at a cost of effective damage, you lose about 30%, diminishing your chances of a one-hit kill by a similar amount. With the bolt action, a one-hit kill is important, as your rate of fire is restricted. The lower recoil sniper rifles, such as the WA-2000 and M21 EBR, are better silenced. The intervention suffers greatly with the damage loss, even with stopping power. The heartbeat sensor will allow you to detect close-range foes, giving you a fighting chance to switch to your secondary. The intervention isn't great up close, as firing from the hip is not a reliable method of killing an assailant, and you can't dump an entire magazine quickly like you can with the Barrett. If your enemies are using Ninja, they won't show up on your sensor anyway, so it might be best to rely more on your claymores to protect your rear and flank. The ACOG scope is available, but is not an ideal choice for the intervention, again due to its poor close quarter performance. While you gain a faster aiming speed, the rate of fire constraint and small magazine means you won't fare well in an aggressive sniper role. The thermal scope is much better suited, especially on maps with dense foliage such as Overgrown or Wasteland. The less aggressive, more defensive sniper roles suit the intervention better than other weapons, and on the right maps the thermal lends itself to this style of play. FMJ enhances your chances of taking out enemies behind cover, and although it's only a marginal difference, can net you a few extra kills. If you're happy with the default scope and don't feel the need to use a heartbeat sensor, FMJ is probably the best choice for the intervention. 40 kills with FMJ and you'll finally unlock extended mags, giving you 10 rounds instead of 5, a sizeable increase which can be useful. If you're using sleight of hand however, the reload speed is very quick, so extended magazines might be best if you're running an alternative blue perk. The fast aim speed you get with sleight of hand pro is hard to pass up however, it's definitely my preferred first perk. You could adopt Marathon to get to sniping positions more quickly, in somewhat of a scout sniper role. You'll need to take a more deliberate approach to your shots, setting up with overwatch on choke points and anticipating enemy movements. If camping is more your thing, scavenger could be an alternative, giving you a near limitless supply of claymores, as long as hapless foes keep running into them. For your second perk, stopping power is the only really sensible option. You want to ensure a one hit kill where possible. If you want a stealthier approach, the lower recoil sniper rifles will fare better with Cold Blooded. For your yellow perk, Steady Aim Pro will both allow you to hold your breath for longer and give you a better chance at hitting a close range attacker by firing from the hip. 
If you plan on moving around a lot and being a little more aggressive, Ninja might be a good way of masking your movement instead. As is usual with the sniper rifles, when on the move you all want to switch to your secondary to give you a fighting chance in close quarters. A machine pistol or handgun would be an ideal pairing. The intervention is a popular weapon, most likely due to the legacy of the similarly bolt-action M40A3 in COD 4. The slow cyclic rate of fire means you have to be accurate, but well-placed shots usually result in one-hit kills. The high emphasis on accuracy and shot placement means it is a weapon that rewards skill, although I don't regard so-called quickscoping to be to the strengths of this weapon. I'd recommend you keep your distance from your opponents where possible. The intervention rewards accuracy and patience like no other weapon. The slow cyclic rate of fire means it's difficult to get to grips with, but once you're used to it, it can be devastating. Thanks for watching, this has been Xbox Ahoy. Join me next time when I'll be covering the second available handgun, the 44 Magnum. Until then, farewell.